So what's what's going on, Carl? Stuttering John is out there so much. I feel like he's sort of jumped the shark. And I noticed that you you covered him. The, the last show of yours I listened to, I was so glad that you were covering a normal show, like a really regular crappy show, instead of going all Stuttering John. Because I, I'm a little weary of him. I still was amused that he was just interviewing Elisa in the most pathetic and ridiculous and clueless manner. I mean, he really thinks she's hot. You know, she's some sexy hot mama, and she's saying everything but that. Yeah, so he had Elisa Jordana on his show. Obviously, everyone who listens to the Drew and Mike show knows Elisa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Elisa hasn't had sex with a man in three years. She's Her fiance's a gay man. She's not <laughs> interested in sex at all. And John just keeps asking her sex questions. She's like, John, I don't even like sex. She kept saying that over and over again. John was not getting the hint. He kept pushing more and more questions. Yeah, he thought it was hot, too, which it was not. But uh, no. is, it, is it weird having him putting out so much material now? Because I, I guess, you know, the, the first instinct would be to, oh, I got to cover all of this. But at the same time, is it getting to be too much? Are people saying they're weary of him? Yeah, I'm not overdoing it for sure, because he is podcasting just about every day. Now, his computer was broken recently, so he came back yesterday. I have some choice clips from that, because it's kind of interesting. He's talking about me a lot, but (laughs) we're still doing our regular show. This most recent episode is the Bunny Ranch podcast, where this dork interviews. uh, Oh, Carl, I saw it. Oh, it's fantastic. So fucking fine. hilarious. The the worst host, I forgot who it was said, maybe it was you, that said that, did they just get the janitor to host this show? Because <laughs> it was so awkward and weird. Yeah, Doug from Who's Right joined us on the show. He made that comment. Okay. But yeah, it was so awkward. And you would think this guy is used to talking to, I guess they call them courtesans. Are you familiar with that term? No. It isn't whores? Yeah, yeah the whores, right. Yeah, whores are <laughs> terrible <laughs> interviews. They have nothing to say. They really don't. Well, they were going through the one girl's. So the one woman, she's an older woman. She's like in the Hall of Fame or something, which I said, I don't have rookie of the year than a Hall of Fame when I'm going to the party. <laughs> Wait, the belly dancer? Are you talking about the belly dancer? <laughs> that, that was the fat one. That was the other one. She was also old. I love that concept. The Hall they of really, Fame of whores. And yeah, it's they're going to be piled in a bunch. Yeah, and they're going through the menu, and on the menu, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, you can hit me in the ass, and, you know, all these things. It's like, oh, my God, I don't want to go near that person. It's really gone down since uh, Dennis Hoff left, right? Definitely. Yeah. One of the menu items is she'll squirt in your face in a 69 position. I was like, who is looking for this? This is terrible. Yeah, there's always one. I know, and you're like the ninth guy with her that day. That just, oh, it was grossed out completely. And so anyway, that's fun. But I will say the reason why I did want to talk some stuttering John with you today is because tomorrow at 6 p.m. on the Worthy's Podcast YouTube channel, for the first time, just myself and stuttering John Melendez, 1v1, we're going to have a debate. And I believe this is the first of two episodes at least because we're going to do one on his channel as well. But I'm very much looking forward to tuning in live because what I'm going to do, we're going to do it live tomorrow at 6 p.m. And after that, I'm taking it down and be behind the paywall after that. Does this have a name like the what, the Bungle in the Jungle or the you know, Ali Frazier 2 or what was Ali Foreman, the, the something in Zaire? See, I'm the marketing <laughs> guy. I should have thought of this, Drew. You're right. I need some type of cool name. You got Help time. me out with it. You got a day. I'll, let me think about this. Okay. All so right. So, so Stuttering John's where we're starting. That's fine with me. Yeah, we can definitely do that because it actually was brought up yesterday. I believe you were the one who wanted to front some money for John to take an IQ test against Anthony Cumia. Yes, I did. Okay, so that was brought up on the show. If you play my track number 12, he addresses this. Oh, great. Oh, boy, he doesn't look well at all. Let's see. Cool cut casting. Thanks for the five bucks. You were up at 3,500 towards your friend's chemo to take an IQ test against Cumia. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) I'll take an IQ test against Cumia, but I'll keep the money. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not getting involved with the fucking that was the helping idea. out friends anymore. Look, look how, <laughs> how well that did for me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Okay, I kind of missed the point there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> He's basically <laughs> acting like the only reason why I'm going to keep the money is because everyone was saying I was running a scam when I was just trying to help out a friend last time. So that's so the reason. Was, that's why he wasn't so hungry to help his friend because it wasn't his 3,500 bucks. So I was like, I'm not doing that. 
Right. But now he's saying he'll do it. So <laughs> I'll talk to him tomorrow about it, Drew. I'll ask him if we can uh, make that happen. Yeah. Have you asked Anthony about that? Oh, yeah. Anthony said he would definitely do that. Oh, cool. The funny thing about John, John thinks that if you've graduated college, you're automatically smarter than someone who hasn't graduated college. Yeah. He really does. Jesus. Think. No, I know. I know. He uh, said that many, many times. J- Jason on the YouTube chat says you should call it my last two brain cells fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Good reference. Yeah. Might not mean as much to their audience, but it's yeah. uh yeah, it's gotta have that, that ring of what was, what was There's the another f- one, the stutter in the gutter. The stutter in the gutter? The stutter in the gutter. We're just, we're just, uh, you know, so, yeah, we're, we're shopping just, a few. We're brainstorming yeah. green light yeah, thinking. That was court, yeah. No wrong answers. No wrong answers. Exactly. Okay, so uh we have some more John. All right, so he's gonna start talking about me. And number 13 is just a fun one, just a a fun thing about me that you guys didn't know. (laughs) Note to self, don't trust Carla. (laughs) Carla? (laughs) Because Carl will fuck you. (laughs) Right in the ass! (laughs) Oh, my God. God. What a charmer. Really? (laughs) That was weird. What a total charmer. Why does does he look so blotchy? Because he is. He looks really blotchy, doesn't he? He's not doing well. <laughs> it's not a healthy guy. Is, That's definitely di- for sure. is there a diagnosis? Is he on dialysis or something like that? I mean, well, I think he might have some organs possibly failing actively. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Dr. Steve about this. I think that could be the case as well. Alcohol may have been a factor. <laughs> as long as Dr. Steve points out that he's not treating John, he can say whatever he wants. Well, this is what I asked, and this is a private conversation, so I hope Steve doesn't get mad at me. But I asked him about the fact that John seems to get very intoxicated after having like two beers on his show. Oh, yeah. That's that because he's also on Klonopin. And he oh. said, well, it could be that or it could be that his liver isn't metabolizing the alcohol because it's not working yeah. correctly. Oh. Uh, interesting. Ugh. Well, we, we do wish very him, possible. We've always wished for the best in John's health. Well, yeah. Where everyone's sure. making so much money off of him. Of course. He's an economy. <laughs> All right. So. I, you, I don't know if I've talked about it on this show yet. I think we have. The fact that John and I are neighbors at our new homes in Florida. <laughs> That's so bizarre yes. to me, but yes. <laughs> Craziest thing ever. So, John, we go back and forth between being friends and being enemies lately. So, he DM'd me the other day, and I didn't respond. He's very mad at me about that. My track number 19, he was uh, trying to help me out, my new home that I have. Oh, oh. 19. Hang on. Great. <laughs> There's some real progress in this relationship. If you have a Michael Carl, if you ever need a plumber, a water system guy, I don't know. Uh, I forget what else I said. It was a bunch of different things, like a, uh, I think a contractor. Or, there was a whole bunch of things. If you ever need this, you ever need that, you ever need this, just let me know. I can help you. I'm here. You ever need something like this? <laughs> Talk to me. I have the gift of gab. I go to a, I go to a bar. Everyone recognizes me. I know that that doesn't happen to you, but when I go to a bar, huh? they they recognize me. They take pictures and they go, "Hey, I'm a plumber. You ever need a plumber? Hey, I'm a lawyer. You ever need a lawyer? Hey, I'm a water system guy. You ever need a water system guy?" <laughs> and I, and I, I keep their numbers And you know Why not spread the love <laughs> Tried to do that with Carla Skyula <laughs> Carl he mentioned water He mentioned water systems He doesn't even give me the respect oh. Oh, To dear. respond Excuse me Not even the respect oh. Ooh. Mm-mm. No, because in his mind, I'm some kind of loser. <laughs> yeah, he's got pictures of me all over his panel, fucking disgraceful studio. It's true. So he got that one right. He's I mean, obviously he's still going. <laughs> we can't stop him, Carl. We can't stop him. No, I like that he says I'm obsessed with him because I have pictures of him all over my studio. These are drawings done by like Roy Smith, and they have cockroaches on his shoulder. Yeah, it's fantastic art. Person, that's is what it, I think. Is it possible he's selling water systems? You mentioned water systems no. twice. Sure. What he's talking about is he's talking about everybody at the Pickwick pub who he met, who he tried to exploit and get them to do work at his own house for a very small fee. 
I, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather like talk to somebody who had work done from someone and go, hey, this guy's really good. You should use Zoom as opposed to someone's going, use me. Mark, it's so insane to me that he keeps sending me. He, this is twice now. He sent me things he's like, if you ever need a landscape, you ever need whatever. Like I'm working with people down in Florida. I have my own connections. <laughs> the people I'm working with are people who have worked with these people before and yeah. have put in a, a good word for them. This John's getting drunk at three in the afternoon and going, I met a plumber. If you want to know his name, like, no, I'm good. Presumably, yeah, presumably who's got- also out at the bar at three in the afternoon. <laughs> That doesn't help for yeah. sure. But yeah, they never done work for John. John just met them. They recognized him. So I guess he thinks that I'm supposed to take advantage of that. Oh, you know who Suttery John is? Can he come to my house and fix the water system? For free? I'd be concerned that he would take a middleman fee immediately. That'd be my first thought. Good point. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, find your like, fee no, or Carl, something. I did you a favor. Yeah. How about, you, how about I wet my beak a little bit on this deal? Everybody gets a little piece. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Because honestly, just the fact that he's he told me he would watch my cats, which I don't have any, and <laughs> now he, he tells me he helped me out with a plumber or what? a landscaper. It's almost like he thinks he already did me a favor. Like I, I'm not asking for any of this. No, he's manifesting it that you would ask that you or you would tell him that you would do the same. That way, he the way you can watch his cats when he goes out of town. But Carl Carl's house looks very finished from what I saw. It looked like it was almost new. Yeah, it's brand new. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you need all this stuff? I doubt. Saying. I doubt. Okay. So this is a really funny clip, and it is more visual, but I'll explain it because John's wearing a T-shirt that says "War," oh. and he says, "This is War, people," and he tries to show where his T-shirt says "War," but John doesn't realize he's not looking into a mirror. <laughs> So he gets very confused as to which part of his T-shirt to pull up. <laughs> this is war, people. <laughs> this is war. Other side. Yeah. There we go. I've done this. <laughs> this is war. Oh. <laughs> Did you go for that long, though, Drew? Did you go, no, no. This, is, this is my shirt. This is my shirt. Nope. Oh, no, this is my shirt. <laughs> this is Pretty war. Pretty impressive. Hmm. What, by the way, what did that T-shirt mean? What, was that supposed to be band. threatening? Isn't the T-shirt the war, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. All right, now this is great because John likes to brag about being a better guitarist than I am, and of course, he was in a big band signed to Atlantic Records. <laughs> but he's also a comic, and he can come up with things off the cuff, as he always likes to say. And so he tries to come up with a song about this guy, Patrick Melton. Now, who's Patrick Melton? It doesn't matter. But the guy's 300 pounds. And so John's going to write a song right now in front of us about Patrick Melton. This is very clever by track 15. I just like the, uh, the still that it starts on. That's just a great <laughs> shot of him right there. I come up with original ideas all the time. I write songs all the time. Sco. Can you pause it real quick, Mark? I should point out that <laughs> right here he's talking to the dues payer, which is Shuli Egar. Mm-hmm. So he's telling, he's talking to Shuli Egar directly and going, Shuli doesn't have an original thought. I come with original things all the time. In fact, he's going to prove it right here. <laughs> all right. I'm excited to hear this song. Now, you think he'd have the deck stacked? He'd already have a song written and would act like it was brand new? Patty, 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 Patty. Why do you eat so fucking much? How about fatty for a rhyme there? Patty, Patty, Patty. Okay. Patty, Patty. Why do you eat so fucking much? Skull. Great song. I'm the I'm the Mama Mac Davis here. <laughs> See, deuce player, I can come up with things like that. But but it's that. That's an example. But that's of what you came up with. Wow, Mac Davis. He was proud of himself after that. And the fact that he says he's a better guitarist than I am, um, now I am offended. I've never been <laughs> that. I think he actually wrote that before he said that and had that ready wow. to go, thinking it was really hot shit because he'd done it ahead of time. I don't think it was I've spontaneous. Evidence, I have evidence that he did come up with that on the fly. 
because he's really proud of it. He grabs his guitar again and does it again in uh, my track 16. <laughs> he's really proud of this one. Patty, 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 Patty. Is he getting winded playing this? <laughs> Why are you such a fat fuck? <laughs> well, that was powerful, that ending. I love how proud uh, he is. I think I proved my point. <laughs> I don't think so. Deuce Pale. I have a little acoustic guitar here, and I can come up with something like that. Boom! Ooh! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Anyone could come up with that. Yeah, I know! A child! That's what they would come up with. It's terrible. Now, this is the best part, because 10 minutes later, he's sitting there, and he's going... Oh crap! I hope I can remember that song I wrote because it was a real <laughs> song. Everyone's going to be singing it. This is track seventeen. <laughs> oh, fatty patty! Fat, oh, I, I got to remember that. Well, I'll just play it back because because that's I like that fatty. Oh, it's a classic. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> make sure you remember me. the chord changes. It's like, oh. it's a and then E. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I got it. All right, cool. Oh wow, that's worse than I would have thought. Guys, that's the wit I'm going up against tomorrow. <laughs> on my show. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to go buy some boots to shake, and it's going to be a rough one. But hopefully, everyone can come and support the me. Stutter there. in the gutter. <laughs> we'll come up with something, Carl. And there's going to be a second one too. So there's going to be a one and two. Correct. Well, well, I hope so. I hope so. I hope that John and I are still on speaking terms enough that we can schedule another show after this first one. Now, I just have. Are you doing debate prep, Carl, where you're planning for the, the things that you the stupid things, you know, he'll bring up? Yes. He, he said today on his show that he's been doing a ton of research on me. He's going to catch me in all of my hypocrisy. <laughs> I, I'll have to be ready for that But I also have some things that I want to bring up to him That he's done, so it should be fun And he'll probably bring up stuff that people Like just to troll him That he read about that aren't, aren't true Which he was doing the first time You guys were together Yeah, he says he has screenshots of when I posted His entire audiobook on my Patreon Which is something I've never done But he's going to prove that I did it by showing me a screenshot And we all know how hard it is to fake (laughs) Exactly Oh, cool (laughs) That proves nothing Looking forward to this I'm going to watch this I'm going to school him on how the internet works a little bit Which is something I might know better than him So that's going to be fun Ask him for the metadata and see if that just throws him for a loop Of the screenshot So I have one more clip that I want to play for you guys, because I know you guys love the Beatles. I know you love music and John's obviously a musician. He came up with this song about Bob Levy. Now, Bob Levy's on this show called Misery Loves Company with Kevin Brennan. And so he's talking to he's talking to KB and he thinks the KB's talented. He thinks Bob Levy's not talented. In fact, he calls him Bomb Levy. (laughs) And so clever. He wants to take he wants to take Bob Levy's spot on misery loves company so he's been oh. singing this song for the last couple of weeks and he's very proud of it he thinks it's great kb kb don't be afraid get rid of levy he ain't your friend <laughs> he's doing it for the only cash he can accrue. I love the tempo. On your coattails. Hacky, 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 hack, hack, hacky, hack, 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 hacky, 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 hacky. Oh my God, it's terrible. <laughs> I'm so bad. Pretty catchy stuff, huh? Yeah. Well, what I like about it is how clever it all is. Carl, how much money is he making? Because, you know, he made some big money on the first show. He made three grand or something. And I think Chad paid him some money. What, what is he? Is he doing super? Is he getting a lot of super chats? Super chat. Yeah. So he's, he's actually doing better than he's ever done before podcasting because right now he's getting between, I'd say, 600 and 900 people watching the show live. He's going on for three hours plus what? when he goes on. 
And he is getting super chats from people. The problem is, and I'm going to bring this up to him tomorrow. I don't know how long this show format's going to last. He can't talk because, for three hours, can he? Well, the problem is he wants to talk about the same things over and over again. He wants to talk about <laughs> the newspaper and Bomb Levy and the Hamburglar, Jeez. which is my name. So, wait, so he just stays on so he can still get super chats, even though he's nothing more to say. He says the same things over and over. He talks about Anthony Akumi, he calls Pocky over and over again. So not a lot of original content. It's getting right. a little bit boring already. Okay. <laughs> it makes sense. Although tomorrow, I'll, I'll tell you this, I'll, I'll promote his show right here. On Wednesday, he's going back to his political show with Richard Ojeda. Oh, no. <laughs> really? Ami Major. Ami Major. Oh, that show's so bad. I, I, I didn't think he even enjoyed it. I don't think he does, but that's his only friend in the world. So him and uh, Richard are going to do a show every Wednesday. Well, do the political show. Again. Richard can make a lot of time go by. Richard can talk and talk and talk and talk. So John figures the most, the more time, regardless of quality, that's super chat time, I guess, right? Although the last time they did a show together, John was trying to introduce Richard Ojeda to all of his enemies. And he's going, no, there's this other guy. His name is Anthony Kubia. And Richard's like, I don't care. Why, why are we talking about this, John? What do you, what do you mean? No, no one cares about this. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. There's this guy who goes by hamburger. He's in Rochester. Hold on. I got to tell you about him. So funny. <laughs> yeah, no, Richard's right. He shouldn't continue to talk about these people. But, you know, he's going to do what he's going to do. He doesn't yeah, listen. Richard, stop, stop giving them oxygen, John. He's a terrible you're, you're listener. You want to hear about this, and all you're doing is giving them more fodder. And John's going, I know, I know, but hold on. Let me just tell you eight more things. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, I, Carl, I listened to the podcast you sent me. Yeah, so let's talk about oh. there's a brand new show out. And this oh. is on the Your Mom's House Network. That's, of course, Tom Segura and his wife, Christina P., and that's a very big network, YMH. And they just started a new show called Not Today, Pal, with Robert Eiler and Jamie Ling Sigler. So this is AJ and Meadow Soprano God. coming together all these years later to co-host a podcast together. Carl, do they, do they throw money at these people? Is this, is this a company big enough to say, oh, we're going to sign them for blank and, um, and you know, you guys... We're just going to count on you to do big things like, you know, Spotify was th throwing money at people who really didn't know what they were doing because these people don't know what they're doing. Clearly. They must, Drew, because as I'm watching this first show, and we'll go through it a little bit. I can already tell that there have been eight different meetings over three months time talking about the show format, how they're going to run it, what the segments are going to be because they have, all right, it starts off. They do a Yelp review of a strip club. That's the thing that uh, I want to call him AJ, but his name's Rob. That's the thing that Rob brings <laughs> to the show. And they, they laugh about that. Then they do this thing called the sweet and sour segment. Oh. And that's where people send in their problems in, in life. And Jamie has the sweet angle and Rob has the sour angle on how to fix uh, that. Carl, this is the most, segment. This might be the worst segment I've ever heard suggested. Asking people to write in with their problem and then to describe the sweet response to it and the sour response to it and which one works better. It's like no one is going to do that. You're going to have people dummying those up if you want to continue doing because no one is going to go to the trouble. It's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. It'll all be Except fake. And also, I, I, I know that the actors aren't their real characters in real life, but AJ Soprano is the last person I'd ever ask for advice from. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, that character is too ingrained in me to ever ask him about anything in life. Oh, so Sweet and Sour was actually one of the titles that they played around with. Oh. They also thought about calling the show, We're Talking Here. God, oh, Jesus. Um, um, show. Actually, the, the, the thing emailing your problems, Sweet and Sour, that – Maybe the second dumbest thing, because they were doing this thing where they would be shown pictures of themselves and then they would try to guess where they were when the picture was taken, which for some reason I didn't feel very included in that contest because only yes. only one of them can win. This is a really dumb thing. It's called um, <laughs> it's Memory Lane. Worst idea. They were going to call it What, Where, When. <laughs> My track number five shows you this. So, yeah, basically you just see a picture of those two. Because they worked together Sopranos for however yep. many years that was, 10 or whatever. And so there's a lot of photos of the two, and then they got to figure out where that was taken. But the so thing we're going to do on Not Today, Pal, is um, 
it was, at first we were going to call it what, where, when, but I have a problem saying that. So I think we should just call it like memory lane or something. Okay. The boys are going to Google. No relation. For, we've been friends for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. The boys are going to Google photos of us and show it to us. And we're going to try and figure out where we were, okay. when it was, oh, and what cool. we were so doing. Cool. I love this game. I can't yeah, wait I for the too. one to show up of my 21st birthday, by the way. That's probably the best Sorry. of all time. We will <laughs> never forget. Ooh. Hashtag never. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough, guys. That's fucked up. You guys are supposed to be our friends. Yeah. Okay. So they show a photo of when Rob was still a young, young man. I think this is like beginning of season two. And he goes, oh, geez, I was a pudgy kid back then. This is what you're showing. <laughs> you were on the most popular television show for three years. You looked like this. Yeah. You don't remember. I want to get over it. <laughs> Not only that, the, the game is no fun for anyone watching unless they pick a picture of him where he's really fat or there's something really stupid about the picture because there's nothing in the game for anyone yeah. else. Unless Jamie has a nip slip going, I don't really care about this game at all. <laughs> no, it's awful. <laughs> only the she host can win. Well, right. So it's, it's very stupid. And, of course... Rob is saying that he's never going to get these right because he used to do so many drugs. He's one of these guys who likes to brag about what a yeah. drug addict he was. I and my, God, my track number six shows this. Uh, hang on. Six. Sorry. Oh, 2000 good. or 2001? 2000. Ding, 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 ding. At the wow. Zigfield? Ding, 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 ding. Damn, Jamie. <laughs> See, you didn't do all the drugs I did. That's not fair. That's right. That's exactly why. <laughs> This, okay. is a, this is an ad to don't do drugs. How do you feel about Wait, your... Did you do drugs at this young? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. But when, if anytime you see me on Sopranos, I had already started doing drugs. Yeah, Ooh. I started doing drugs when I was 12 and drinking. Good job. Cool. Well, the peanut gallery really uh, guffawed at that one. So proud of himself. Now, I've definitely drank when I was younger, but it's not really considered drinking. Like, what happens is you binge, <laughs> you're an idiot, you puke for a while, and you don't touch alcohol for three months yeah. because you're... It makes you sick just to smell it. So I was just like, oh, yeah, I was pretty hardcore when I was 13. I doubt it, but OK. Yeah, I very much doubt it. Um, Carl, the peanut gallery and the laughter, I, I know you picked up on that. But also, I'm like, why do they need four people producing a show? There's basically two microphones to open and nothing else. One person could be in that control room, right? Well, yeah, video. I, mean, I would yeah. say. They are doing a video show, and Mark will tell you he's doing three people's jobs right now. <laughs> so he probably okay. understands why there's so many people doing this. Two people? There's no, they don't, we don't need four people. You can do it, too. And let's, let's talk about how the show starts off, because you want to talk about an easy laugh factory. My, my track <laughs> number one, uh, we're going to start off with the elephant in the room. A fun expression. I feel like we just have to address the elephant in the room, which is I lost $1,000 to Nadav. <laughs> You sure fucking did, pal. What happened? Good so morning. Rob made an oopsie. Good Rob morning. made an very oopsie. rare. Rob made very an oopsie. rare. What'd you say, Annie? I said uh, I said get bodied. That's what we say. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. Um, there was a what? What? young black NBA player who was playing basketball against a older white man with two bad knees who recently had heart surgery, and I thought it would be a good idea to bet on the white man who recently had heart surgery and it turns out not a good idea <laughs> i have no idea what that story was they never explain it uh oh it's obviously hilarious though i mean everyone yeah. was laughing quite a bit you heard the one guy in the back going <laughs> <laughs> the natural way to laugh <laughs> I have another example of this. Um, I don't my, my track number two is more super easy laugh from the producers. <laughs> you're just very matter of fact about things. Like you're never wrong. Like I, un what? in the sense of like, I understand. That's the what I need my girlfriends to say. See, that's why things don't work out. <laughs> 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 and Drew, you saw this. The way the show starts is they play a couple of clips of things you're going to see in the show coming up. Like the <laughs> was things. And that was one of the things where he goes, I wish my girlfriend was in that. Like, Blah! <laughs> <laughs> I know. It didn't make any sense. It was not funny. No, it's terrible. I mean, you think you're going to, they think that you're going to believe that, oh, they'll understand why this is so funny when they see it in the show. Wrong. 
Well, it's, it's all very forced. And that's the thing that I want to point out. That's why I say that it looks to me like this is a show that came out of a bunch of different brainstorm meetings mm. with a lot of different <laughs> people throwing out ideas because of all these segments. None of it is really the way that a show naturally goes. Remember, this is the first ever episode. And they're already talking about how the fans can get involved. I can't imagine the balls you'd have to have to go on a, a podcast. Your first episode would be like, and here's how you guys get to participate. It's like, yeah. no, no, grow something first. And then people of, care about it. Of course. They might want to participate. No, I, I think they assume because they were on The Sopranos that this giant pile of people is watching. But no, there's so many podcasts like this out there of people who are nobody's just like them. Because they isn't he a nobody? Absolutely a nobody by yeah. now. Yeah, I, well, I Googled him, and it says he's a retired actor. So I don't even know what he does <laughs> Is By is choice? She, is, no, probably not. Is she still getting roles? God, I haven't seen her in anything. Not that I know. No. I can't think of any. And she's beautiful, yeah. too. But, of course, when she talks about her farts and whether they smell or not, I start losing. I mean, even that starts to fall apart. Sounds All like right, she farts a lot. let's talk about that. So um, <laughs> this is my, my track number seven. And uh, this is the thing where... For whatever reason, they do this thing, questions from a cup. This is one of the segments they do. And I guess Rob writes a bunch of questions down and puts them in the cup. And then Jamie has to pull them out and oh, answer God, them. I hate through. these. I hate segments like this. They're so dumb. You should address the big coffee cup uh, on the table. So I will always put questions in here. And anytime you want, feel free to reach in, grab one. We could do our first one now. Let's see what you got. I wonder if you could read my writing. My writing is fucking terrible. That's a good point. What food makes you fart the most? That was the one. This is what you were hoping I I would say. No, no, no. Here's the deal. I put 10 questions in there and one of them was stupid. And that that is a good omen because I swear the rest of them are. We'll take another one after this. And none of them are stupid like that. That's the one. stupid one. Wow. I'm so So that's very YMH. (laughs) What's YMH? I'm sorry. Oh, that's your mom's house, the network they're on, which I find to be insulting. If I maybe he's right about that, I don't really watch YMH, but <laughs> I'd be insulted. They're like, "Whoa, what? What food makes you fart? This is like the show, the flagship show of this network. They talk about something like that. I'd be like, ah, a little more high brow than that, sir. Come on, oh God! Hey, isn't Jamie Lynn Siegler? Isn't she married to Lenny Dykstra's kid? Or she's, I don't know if she still is. Oh. I mean, why wouldn't they talk about that? That's Cutter. All, that's all. Cutter? Yes. Cutter? Cutter? I don't, extra? They, I don't know if they still are, but when you were talking about her, her movies and stuff, I'm like, I haven't seen her or anything, but that's the only thing I remember. I didn't hear her say a word about it. They are still married. Wow. Okay. Hmm. I, I do have a, a clip or two about her family that I, I will play for you. That oh, she okay. does talk Sorry. about that. But before we get into that, so now Jamie's got to answer this question. Guys, I, I, Mark's already like glossed over. He's like, whatever. So she farts. <laughs> no, I don't sorry. care. No, no, no. We got to get to the bottom of this. What foods are going to make her fart a lot? So this is her whole hilarious answer. So my Rob knows this about me. <laughs> that I, my farts don't stink. Let's yeah, first right. put oh. that out there. Your husband's so, outside. I wonder attest. if he agrees. He can attest. Okay. I don't have smelly farts. Mm. However, I have farts that come unannounced that I'm unprepared for that are loud. <laughs> Could you imagine being in that booth? No. And you didn't pretend that that's funny? No. Hey, what a horrible job. I, ex- I suspect they've been encouraged to do that, to open the mics, because normally you don't even have those mics open. They all have microphones right in their face. One of the commenters earlier mentioned um, that the one guy does all the shows on the your mom's house uh, network, and he does yeah. that for every single show. Correct. That's part of the formula. They've been doing that. Tom Segura has been doing that forever. There's actually a guy from Buffalo who I kind of know who was the guy that was his role on the show was to laugh really hard at everything that they said. Like, if you watch Two Bears, One Cave, that oh horrible Tom and Bert Kreischer show, Bert Kreischer will just be like, what if we ate peanut butter and then try to have a conversation? Just here. Like it's the funniest concept ever brought up on a show before. You're like, Jesus mm. Christ. Carl, uh, this is off the subject, but have you seen The Machine, the movie? <laughs> no, but actually my buddy Tony from Hack the Movies wants me to go on his show and do a review of it. So I'm going to have to watch it. <laughs> it sounds so bad. I haven't seen it, but it sounds awful. Hasn't he built his whole career on that story? Yes. Yeah. Well, 
But this movie, though, because I watched the trailer on Who Are These Socials, this movie, though, is not that story. They show you that story, but then you fast forward 20 years and it like happened. He goes back to Russia again. Oh, and has uh, a great adventure with his dad, who's played by Luke Skywalker. Yeah. So that's I, like the premise of the I movie. also saw, um, is it uh, who De Niro played his dad in the movie? Sebastian Maniscalco, I think, had a movie out, oh, too. Yeah, yeah. And I got to tell you, I saw De Niro on the Today Show. De Niro looked so absolutely like he was phoning this in. He didn't even smile. He was so bummed out to be promoting this movie. And then I read it was horrible. <laughs> Worse than the machine, I, I think. I'm done with De Niro and comedies. Can we all stop this with De Niro yeah. being in the final day? And it doesn't help for him to make appearances if he's not, if he hates the movie, <laughs> which he clearly did. That's probably true. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to talking about her family. So they were on this road trip, and the car broke down, and they were in the middle of Alabama or something, and there's a hurricane coming through. So she's talking about she has two young kids. I think they're five and nine, if I'm not mistaken. So she's talking about the younger son of my track number three. This is kind of embarrassing. Now our kids are starting to, like, ask what's going on. They're looking up from their iPads. They're a little sweaty. And your son has something we call nervous poops. And my youngest son has nervous poopies where um, any kind of, whether it's exciting things or nervous things, it makes him have to poop 75 times a day. So now he's looked up from the iPad and is like, I got to poop. I'm like, okay. Mm. Oh, Jesus. I can't imagine if my mom was on a podcast when I was younger, I would be so angry at her. Why are you... Why are you telling the world my business, Bob? This, this has nothing five. to do with your audience. This must have been a conversation between them, and I guarantee you, oh my God, stay for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because it's about shit. So, therefore, shit equals funny. I, I don't know. I can't imagine why else she would tell that stupid story. I'm just worried about that kid. Every time he gets nervous, he's got a shit. That's or she, weird. You know, when they were talking about the farting, too, she went into much more detail about starting from putting things into her mouth all the way through her body until he either shit or fart come out come out the back end i was like why is she doing this she's pretty they're cute so hard they're trying so hard to be entertaining i know yeah. no it's pain it's yeah. painful because they are trying and they have bits i mean i give them credit because i've heard so many shows where they just think that hey just us talking is plenty good enough but they're they're trying but they're trying way too hard and somebody needs to tell them to stop trying so hard and and that their ideas suck all of their well, ideas suck I really bad. i don't think they have good chemistry at all i mean you would think working Not really. together they would but yeah it's okay i guess they're friends kind of sort of well, they worked so. together when they were either children or yeah. in their early 20s 20 yeah. years ago right so you got to keep that in mind as well so all right we're going to set up another bit here and this is a <laughs> bit called that's crazy dude oh my god Rob's excited about this one and what they do is they play a couple of uh video segments of a guy playing madden this is and so bad out. Which is because the guy, the guy's losing at Madden. Yeah, he's getting pissed. He's like, he's like, what the hell? This game sucks. Whatever, he's freaking out. And every time they play it, everyone in the booth, everyone's just like, yeah, this is what people do when they play video games. They get really right. frustrated. Yeah, and it's, it's not so that unusual. Then, my track number nine, he he sets up the wrong clip. But <laughs> either way, this is the thing he wants to get to for this segment. <laughs> He's for catching the ball fourth and two when I can't catch the ball right there. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> okay, no, that's not him at the end of his rope. What that is is so when we were discussing segments that I wanted to do on the show, a lot of them pointed towards the same thing, which is just people doing crazy yeah. shit and me being like, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> you know, so I want this, you know, they said be careful or he's going to turn into an internet meme. I want him to live on in this show. And whenever we think something's a little nutty, we can. That's crazy, dude. Oh, that's you know? brilliant. Yeah. I think some of the things that like jump off at the beginning to me is like, how come at a wedding, every wedding I go to, there's some woman in like her 50s in the front row filming it with an iPad. That's crazy. Now, no one agrees with him on that. No one else has seen that happen. Cool. I've never seen that happen. Were you surprised that no one backed him up? I thought one of those guys would go, oh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Well, no, but they try to. They go, well, maybe not a wedding, but maybe, you know, something else I've seen. <laughs> but what's so bad about that is that he's trying to create this drop that they're going to use mm -hmm. on a few episodes. <laughs> it's but those things happen organically. You right. can't 
forced that to happen. Like, isn't this a crazy video? I was just like, I don't know, kind of. And he's like, well, from now on, this we're gonna hit this drop. You guys are remember this video? Like, okay, if you it's, say so. It's not that great a drop either. I mean, it's oh, okay. Not yeah, Brandon, can you pull it? Oh, I already music? wrote that okay, down good. to pull it because that's, <laughs> that's going crazy, in our dude. system right now. <laughs> Very it's ironically. Oh. oh, it's painful. When you can't get the producers right. to kind of just go along with you because you're so far off. I mean, those guys just didn't want to apparently extend their credibility that far to say, oh, yeah, CB with iPads at weddings all the time recording them. I'm, it was that was a painful show. It really was. Yeah. Even Jamie Lynn goes, well, I might go to classier weddings than you because I've oh. never seen the crowd. <laughs> good line, though. That's a good yeah. way to cover it. Yeah. Right about that. Um, all right, then they do F. Mary Kill. Let's skip that oh, one. Oh, I know. And then, why um, would, well, Carl, why wouldn't somebody say, that's so cliche, it's so done, you've got too many bits in this show already. Yeah, I yeah. mean, can't you kill any time talking about the shows of the Sopranos? F. Mary Kill was interesting in the 90s when I used to hear Howard Stern do it with, with guests, and apparently they were doing it on a show called Pajama Pants. Now, I didn't realize that Rob and Jamie Lynn were on a show called Pajama Pants with this other guy, Kasem G. That pod faded back in December. Oh, boy. So now they brought these two back together again. I guess <laughs> Kasem G is the odd man out on this one. <laughs> and so they're just like, F. Mary Kill. She's like, I don't know. All right. So they do that. <laughs> and then this is the dumbest game ever. So they're going to do Sopranos trivia and it's so convoluted and drew you pointed this out because you were texting about this today um my track number 11 this is not how anything works <laughs> neither of us have watched the sopranos in its entirety correct in its entirety you've watched I've more watched than me because you watched seasons. them during covid i've watched almost four right so what we're gonna do is uh they're gonna ask us a question about sopranos uh-huh. and we're gonna keep a tally whenever we do this and it's going to see at the end of, you know, we'll do 20, 30, whatever questions, or we'll always find what out the win? score. Uh, I don't know. We can write we'll in to not today, pal podcast at gmail.com. Oh, and send, idea. Us, send us, no, really send us videos and voicemails of things that you're going through in your life. <laughs> and you want <laughs> us to discuss how you would handle it in a sweet way, how I would handle it in a sour way. <laughs> yeah, and no, ultimately no. what we think the better decision <laughs> is on how people should handle th- problems in their life. And <gasps> also email what you think the prize should be for who wins the Sopranos. No, yeah, no, you are no, prep. no. Do our show for it. <laughs> it's so bad. They're asking for way too much. Yeah. But also, I love the fact that they go, okay, we're going to do Sopranos trivia. Neither of us have ever seen it. That would be like on the Drew and Mike shows. I have an idea. Let's do a segment where we ask Drew about Star Wars. (laughs) You're right. What's the, what's um, the point of this? Like everyone knows Sopranos better than you two do because we've all watched it a million times. You've never even seen it. Then why are you doing Sopranos trivia? That's dumb. It's a waste of time. Why did I watch it if they're not going to watch it? I got to tell you, I want to hear the phone call where they call and go, yeah, we get some uh, videos and emails in on uh, problems with the sweet and sour reactions. Uh, no, nothing. No. Uh, what about the suggestions for the price? No, nah, nothing. That one. Because they're not getting any emails and they're getting no videos. None. But you know what I mean, Drew, where it was very segmented. You had all these things that they've obviously talked about. Okay, then we're going to do this. Then we're going to do this. The transitions weren't great, but it was edited together. Now, compare that to I just started a new show called Who Are These Broadcasters? My buddy Christian Blatt. We just did our pilot episode and we had a bunch of different segments on there. And I'll tell you how we prepared that show. He sent me an email and said, here are the things that I think we should do on our show. And I went, all right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But you guys, have done, no sh- you, guys have, you guys have done shows together before. It's true. It could have it could have been well beyond your rookie show because I listened to about uh, 25 minutes of it and it sounded good. Andrew wrote on oh, that in the chat. He wrote, is there any more work we need to do to watch their show? Do we need to watch their <laughs> fucking cars? Like, what, what else do we have to do here? No, it's crazy. A lot of work. Emails. The first email needs to be about this. The yeah. second one about that. I'll play you one more clip on here. My track number four. So. Rob is talking about how he used to have this gym in his building in L.A. where there was this one guy who would just put boogers on the wall. Oh, I think it, the way to handle that is like in casino when they catch the guy cheating and they take him in the back and they <laughs> they're like, oh, which hand? I'd be like, which hand do you pick your nose with? Oh, I'm not I'm not doing this to people who <laughs> somebody's got to do it. <laughs> like, what hand do you pick your nose with? And then they bash his hand with a hammer. See, this is my problem. Everyone who's ever been on The Sopranos thinks they were in the mafia. Have <laughs> you noticed that? Yes. So I see these guys all over the place, and they all talk like this. They're just like, oh, you know what I would have done? 
What would you have done? You were no, you in wouldn't. theater yeah. before you were cast on The Sopranos. What are you talking about? Forget about it. And, and you were hammered. <laughs> he's a skinny runt, too. He's not going to be badassing anybody. It's 5'6". Oh. That was, oh God, it was painful. I think it's because I didn't know they had pod faded in December, Carl. So they obviously blamed it on the third guy who's not in this show and said, you know, we're going to get organized and we're going to we're going to plan this show out. And they've well overdone it. And whether they'll ever figure it out, I don't know, because they don't have much chemistry. And that's really what it's all about. So sorry, and Drew. I'll tell you this. This episode, it came up five days ago. It's got 120,000 views. So it's on a big network. It's getting eyeballs on it. I can't figure out who the target audience is for it, though, because honestly, I think um, people who like Jamie Lynn, like Meadow Soprano, great. She's very attractive. That's fine. Nobody liked AJ on that show. No. People who are Sopranos fans wouldn't watch this because they don't know anything about the Sopranos. They don't really yeah. talk about it. <laughs> but I'm not sure who the target audience, like, if, if they, I, I would love to be in one of those meetings, just raise my hand and go, so who's going to listen to this thing? Yeah. Carl, did you read comments where people saying, oh, I love this show? I didn't see anyone saying they loved this show, no. Okay, because 120,000 views, is that's pretty good. I mean, that has it is. potential, oh, but I suspect, I think the view number is going to go down, 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 down. Maybe. We'll see. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. I will, yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on it because okay. that's bad. That's, hey, that's it's really got a five-star rating after 117 reviews, so it's off to a good start. Hmm. What? That's got to be friends and th those producer guys. This <laughs> new oh, podcast is awesome. Yeah. I love the sweet and sour energy between Rob and Jamie. Oh, come on. That's so fake. Read a couple more. I'm Brandon. super excited for this new podcast. Jamie is awesome. Rob's cool, too. Wow. I've been looking forward to this for months. So happy the gang is back together. Looking forward to listening each week. Oh, so these are people that listened to them before. Th these are fake. There's no and, way. And, and it's before you're even posted. There's no human being this simple. <laughs> I don't think the last episode of that pajamas podcast I was telling you about. I checked that out and it had like forty thousand views. Hmm. So I'm guessing that was probably on a sharp decline. Yeah, and then they said, "Okay, let's try to reboot it somehow, get some new life going." Well, yeah, different network. I mean, this wasn't on the on Segura's network, was it? The previous one? I think it was. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. really? And they, I'm surprised they'd reboot. It's got four hundred and twelve uh, Twitter followers on their Twitter. Or their X, whatever it's called. Hey, okay. right? they get a lot of likes and uh, comments and retweets. Um, let's see. The last thing they posted has nine likes. <laughs> no, re no retweets, no comments. I'm sorry to hear that. Now, yeah, boy. Drew, I, I know we're running along, but I know you want to talk about Opie. I got two quick clips if you want to. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I, I asked you to play because I'm really tired of hearing him say the same, same thing. I'm curious to hear if you picked the clips. You probably did. I, I Go ahead. Right. So. Opie now is finding himself, he's, he's realizing that there's a lot of controversy going on right now. They call it Podcast Wars 2023. And, you know, Suttering John making his return and all the Chad Zumok shenanigans and Misery Loves Company and BS show on the Shuley Network. And who are these podcasts? All these different shows all have interchanging guests and, and controversies going on, squabbles. So my track number 20, Opie talking about how he's better than all of this. Hey, oh, sir, Reverend Bob, Shuley, Kevin Brennan, and Stuttering John are all saying they sent you the link last night. Would you ever go on with them? Man, I'm a big get right now in the Podcast Wars of 2023. And I haven't clicked on it. I saw a link from Chad. Chad sent me a link. I might, I might uh, jump on one of those silly live streams. They're all just silly live streamers. <laughs> that son of a bitch, Kevin Brennan, makes thousands of dollars on Super Chats. What am I doing wrong? I'm better than stupid Kevin Brennan. Are you kidding me? Do I have to join the podcast wars of 2023 to get real money coming in on this dumb thing? Join the podcast war. Oh, destroy both sides. They can't handle the broadcasting knowledge and skills. You, you got that right. What you got? What you got? What you got? You can't hit me. What you got? I would crush them like a bug. Then, okay, then why don't you? Well, then just do it. Why does he? Because he can't. I don't know what he's waiting for. Uh, you know, let's let's Drew, look at what happened. Yeah. 
Carl, he keeps saying that, um, yeah, you may be doing something right now, but you'll never touch the Opie and Anthony show. He keeps saying that. It's like, yeah, Reggie Jackson used to clean up for the Yankees, too, but he can't now because he can't. <laughs> right. You, however, being in broadcasting, you should be able to do something about this since you're talking so much shit. But it looks to me like the show was the draw of the show was Anthony and Jim, because when Anthony does stuff, he gets a big audience. Jim is doing very well. Opie is the one who gets 500 views, and yet he somehow can't give any credit to these people except to say that they'll never do what the Opie and Anthony show did. He started out with this giant audience, and he is not able to give credit to people who started out from scratch, just from organically starting podcasts who have wildly passed him, and he can't give them an inch of credit when he can't do close to what they're doing and he keeps suggesting they're not making any money um i don't i don't know why is he so pompous about it because he's doing nothing his ego should be shattered by now i will say this though uh, pretty cool uh, sweepers in and out of segments there i mean I, I like his sweepers too i agree i'm sure he did he played a, i played a clip on, no he did not he's got help <laughs> what i played a clip on the show the other day where he was talking about how he was checking out my show a little bit. He's like, he's not good at this at all. We would have crushed him back in the day. Yeah, Nobody the other show crushed this guy. And it's like, okay, so you're admitting that you need Anthony and Jim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if you can crush me, then do it. What are you waiting for? Well, he's, he's got uh, 150,000 subscribers and he gets 100 views or 1,000 views or something. Uh, I mean, you've got 20,000 subscribers you've built from scratch in the last five or six years and you get wildly more views than he does. We get more views than he does. And he's from this giant show. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from the show. The show was huge. Of course it was. I give them credit. But why is it that he has to constantly put down all these people now and, and act like, oh, yeah, if I felt like it, I would just crush you. Well, then just crush him. He's been saying that for years. I remember him saying that if he wanted to, he'd be bigger than Joe Rogan in podcasting. It's like, Opie, <laughs> slow your roll, buddy. What are you doing? I, I don't think That's he does. That's not the guy to go after. Do you think he doesn't do his homework? Because sometimes I heard him say one time, it was on your show. He said, you know, I talked to my agent and uh, he said uh, he Googled all these low level podcasts like Carl and uh, he can't find anything on them. It's like, no, that's not. That's new. We know that's not true. Because you can't even find these guys. Yeah, go Google who are these podcasts. How many pages? <laughs> no, I, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. I really don't, which is embarrassing. He just can't no, handle I, the fact that people have passed him by. It's 2023. It's not 2013 now, Opie. Now, there, there's another clip I have here, my track 21, and he's talking to this guy named Jake Hudson. Now, Jake Hudson is this dude who lives in a trailer somewhere in middle America. And I, I don't know if he's all there. And he gets on all these shows. I'm not sure why. I don't know if he's like a whack pack or something. But just the fact that Opie has him as the guest on his show and says this is pretty incredible. I'd like to point out, too, before I play it, he's got great window treatments. (laughs) Oh, does he? Higher sog. Oh, oh no. I ain't hiring any of these people. None of these live streamers. Jake, Jake, let me explain something to you. Can you pause it real quick? No, no. (laughs) Yes. Person who's who's messaging him, his name is Hugh Jasshole. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. so that's an important note to make also it says hire Sal Gavrinelli as your Anthony style sidekick <laughs> now Sal Gavrinelli works for the Howard, Howard Stern show yeah. so he's not part of any of this but Opie doesn't know that he's an idiot All right, keep it <laughs> I like to that, that, kidding me. that Hugh Jassel his picture is Steven Seagal <laughs> yeah. really dark hair Carl how about um, those names that people are trying to throw at John to get him to say like gay bathhouse Gabe oh. G-A-B-E-A-T-H O-U-S-E, Ath House. Uh, some of those names were killing me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, let me explain something to you. Sorry. No, no, there's no sorries, but I'm going to give uh, everybody a little reality today. Great like, view. I was on top Great of the mountain with this the guy, by the way. I know, he's leaned in so far to his <laughs> camera, you just see this bright, bald head. <laughs> And, Why his window, t- and his window treatment. Are there those great window treatments? Is he trying to make room for the window treatment? Is that what he's doing? I don't know, but he's, <laughs> he's got it perfectly framed in his shot. That's oh, my beautiful. God. Is that horrible? Like, I was on top of the mountain with a radio show. Oh, yeah, and then I know. did very well on my own before oh. and after. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. None of these live streamers, in the end, impressed me at all. Not one. Give me one guy that, that impresses you where I could do a full-time show with. There's um. not one of them. No. They're not impressing me by sniping and yelling and screaming at each other day after day. 
Not one. Are they bigger than me right now? Yes, they are. I, I have to admit that, but they they don't impress me considering where I was with my radio show. Okay. Carl, he's not he's, he's not good enough to do a show with any of these people. He he would have nothing to add. They would be the ones who'd be hurt by having him on. And the good news is he's not the target audience for any of these shows. So the fact that he doesn't think they're very good doesn't mean anything. I, I just think he's jealous or something, because I, I don't understand why couldn't he give them a modicum of credit coming from nowhere, virtually? I mean, I, Kevin Brennan, of course, has an audience from stand up. But a lot of you and some of the other guys, they've just tried to build something from nothing. And they've, here they've built something. And he just has to say, oh, but you'll never be Opie and Anthony or uh, me before and after Opie and Anthony. What did he do after Opie and Anthony? I don't know what he's talking about, honestly. Oh, what he after Opie and Anthony, he went to Afternoons, but he, he didn't want that gig. Then he got fired. Then he went to Westwood One as a podcast, and he got fired from that because he lost his audience immediately, and he's done nothing since then. No, so I, the fact that Opie is bragging about anything he's done outside of Anthony or Jim Norton is insane to me. Yeah. He may have had a giant audience. They did. I, I handed to him. They were huge. Howard Stern and Opie and Anthony were the it's biggest shows, show. the shows that I would have aspired to be in my format because I was in Rock 2 and in you know Hot Talk or whatever you want to call it. However... He also would have lost more audience than anyone in, in that format, too, because now he has no audience. And he started with that giant audience. He has nothing. Drew, isn't it very convenient that Opie says no one could do what Opie and Anthony did? That's because technology has changed. Yeah. The entire landscape has changed. That doesn't exist anymore. There's no such thing as a show that's going to get picked up by a company and become the number one show. Even Call Her Daddy, which I don't think is great, built an audience and then got signed to a big deal with Spotify. But they had to build an audience first, whereas Opie and Anthony, they get hired by XM. And now they're a national show. And then Sirius acquires XM. And now they're on Sirius XM. And now they're in 30 million cars. Like, there's no such thing as that anymore. No, there isn't. Uh, and and I, would, I would say that show could be great now. If it just came along now, it'd be a great show. It probably wouldn't be as big because of the scenario uh, of the times itself. But the reason it'd be big is because of Anthony and Jim, not because of him. Hasn't he right. figured out that, you know, when when a, when the team splits up, a lot of times you find out that, wow, the team was really mostly that guy or it was mostly that guy or neither one of them are shit on their own. But in this case, it seems we found out that, well, Jim seems to do really well. Anthony seems to do really well. Opie, not so much. So I don't know why he talks so much shit, honestly. It's, it's Even pathetic. Sam Roberts, who joined them as an intern mm -hmm. and was, you know, a producer on the show, whatever that role was. He is now the host. He's now in Opie's chair on the Jim and Sam show. Morning radios on Sirius. Sam Roberts is way more successful than Opie is now. I agree. And all Opie does is say he sucks and Jim and Sam's a terrible show and it's the worst. It's like Opie. It's a bad look. You seem bitter. You just seem bitter when you, when you say that. Yeah, not only does he put all those people down, none of those people like him, which is even worse. It's like, why does he have no friends among all those people? Seems to me somebody's getting exposed the more time goes on. But it's a uh, common denominator, as us mathematicians like to say. Uh huh. <laughs> no, very much so. And and this recently, uh, he was talking shit about how, yeah, uh, some guy, uh, some uh, executive in the radio industry has uh, has heard what I'm doing, really likes what I'm doing, even though no one watches it. I don't even believe that. I, this story sounds like fiction. Uh, he wants to put me together with somebody and put me on uh, in New York City, uh, but it, but he wants me to go in, and I don't want to go in, and I don't want to work with another. Anthony's like, are you kidding me? Why are you acting so cocky about this? This is like you would be you'd be really lucky if anybody even offered you that. I don't even believe him. I think he's talking yeah, complete bullshit. He has like all the leverage. He goes, listen, I would I would go work for a company together, but they gotta do it on my terms. I want to broadcast from my house in the Hamptons and from my yeah. apartment in oh, Manhattan. Geez. You're like, dude, this this is not you don't have that leverage anymore. No, buddy. he has none. Or drive, it sounds like. Um right. Carl, we still got some tickets for uh the magic bag on September the 15th. We do, right? We do. WATPLive.com is where you want to go to purchase your tickets. September 15th, it's a Friday night, and uh, the Wolverines have a uh, night game on Saturday night, so yeah. it won't interfere with your other weekend plans. And the, the Tigers, I know everyone's going to Tigers games right now. They're out of town that weekend, so you don't have to worry about that. That's a good time to come in, though, if you want to go to a Michigan game, because it's not a Big Ten game. You might, you'd probably be able to get tickets easily, wouldn't you, Mark? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I got him. I got Carl's covered. 
Oh yeah, we've course, already talked. Of course, yep. Carlos. Yeah. But uh, we'll be in the one part of the stadium where you we, you can you can drink the part that's already been approved. <laughs> um, We're and excited. I want to mention that uh, Ted Williams is. It looks like he's coming. It looks like yeah. it's on target. Yeah, I'll believe when I'm I see it. I'm just saying, I, you know, they they've cut the uh, they've cut the audio for us. Uh, they received the payment somehow. It took a long time. <laughs> we figured it out. I think he's coming. I, I could be wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's it's a guessing game, but it looks like. I don't know. I'm just saying. I think he's going to be there. This is exciting. Now, will he be there for the meet and greet? Yes. Beforehand? Will yes. he hang out afterwards? He, to loved, to people? he loves the meet and greet. According to his guy, Ted loves taking selfies. He loves meeting people. We already know that about him because we've met him. He's well, that a very part, genial yeah. guy. Yeah, he'll do that part. No, he's really cool. <laughs> All right. So I got to tell Troy Smith because he's making our poster for the show. And of course, everyone who comes <laughs> to the meet and greet gets a signed poster as well. We got to incorporate the golden voice into that poster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. And Carl, what's on the show? What uh, When is you got who are these broadcasters? When does that come out? And when does who are these socials come out? Thursday night, correct? So th- who are these socials with Blind Mike? That's every uh, Thursday night at 6 p.m. We'll be doing that. Now, of course, the big one is in, in lieu of my regular episode of Who Are These Podcasts, tomorrow at 6 p.m. live on our YouTube channel. It'll be the, the great debate between <laughs> Suttering John and myself. We still have to come up with a name for it. I'm going on uh, Shuli's show tomorrow morning to promote that. So if we can get a name before that, that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. <laughs>